Uh, Colin's gonna piss some people off with this one. <laughs> Alright y'all, so today was supposed to be my day off from YouTube, I had a busy weekend and today was just supposed to be my day to just do nothing. I just wanted to binge something on Netflix, under the covers all day, get fat and just, just chill. And I came across Colin Kaepernick's show called Colin in Black and White, which is trending right now on Netflix. So I said, okay, hey, why not uh, review something that's trending, helps the channel get a lot of views, so fuck it. And um... <laughs> From the jump, alright, so I'm three episodes in, it's six episodes, I'm three episodes in, and from the very first episode, I said, oh shit, I said, Colin, do you know what you're doing? You are gonna piss some people off with this one. Look, he's not exactly the most loved person in America right now, a lot of black people fuck with him, but then there's some conservatives that don't, and the conservatives are the main ones that are blasting him, and you know, the conservatives I'm talking about that I mention on my channel a lot. Now, watching it myself, I will say these first three episodes, a little heavy-handed with the politics and with the, with the, with the racism, you know what I mean? I, like, this show should have been called Colin in Black and White, this should have been, sh this uh, should have been called, like, you know, like, Everybody Hates Chris, this should have been called All White People Hate Colin, because <laughs> there's not one scene where he has a positive interaction with white people including his adoptive parents. Now, to those that don't know, Colin Kaepernick is of mixed race, all right? His daddy was black, his mama was white, his mama put him up for adoption because the daddy left him, and he was raised by a white family in a white town with little to no black people in his school, okay? So his experience growing up was a, a black boy in a white world, and he's faced nothing but discrimination, hard looks, and just uh, disrespect, you know, according to him, that's his truth. I don't know the man, I wasn't there, but his truth is, growing up where he grew up at, that that was his experience. Now, now, <laughs> in my Cosby voice, growing up like he did, you're either going to come out two ways. Either you're going to come out like Colin Kaepernick, where he's, he's pro-black, he's proud of his black heritage and the culture, and I'm proud of that, or you could be somebody like Brandon Tatum, who's a self-hating black man, who uses his platform and his million up subscribers to bash black people every chance he gets and shit on his own people and make mockery of his own people even when he feels like he got them and something like, ah, ah, see, see, they said it was racism, but it was racism, it was a black person that was racist. Yeah, I even pick on him sometimes when I do my little uh, skits about him. But now just for me watching it, the show is entertaining because it's a page turn like a motherfucker. I, I only planned on watching the first episode. The first episode turned into two episodes. Two episodes turned into three. I'm about to start four as soon as I shoot this review and put it out there for you all. So, is this a good watch? To me, it is. This is just to me. I haven't seen any, any reviews on it yet. I don't know what people are saying about it. But I just imagine there are going to be people so pissed off. Especially the controversial opening where he, com he compared the NFL Combine to slavery. Now, I can see the parallels as far as how they examine the players, how they, they check them out, you know, how healthy they are, how fast they are. I, I, I can see the parallels from that perspective. But to say, like, slavery, uh, I didn't play in the NFL. So, Cop uh, Colin Kaepernick has some behind-the-scenes shit that I don't know about, I guess. But with slavery, we were brought here in chains and whipped and once we were checked out, like, UK, once once slavery went through the combine, it wasn't millions of dollars waiting in the pearls. There wasn't big houses and cars and shit waiting for us and endorsement deals. No, it was working for the massa and getting the scraps and eating everything on the, on the pig from the rooter to the tooth, okay? So, uh, so I can see some people really getting offended by this. I can see some people really just getting offended, period. And he does not shy away from shitting on Trump. Like I said, this this show is... Very politically heavy-handed, it is, and uh, yeah, they don't uh, pass up all the opportunity to shit on Trump, so I can see all the MAGA people, oh my god, fuck Colin Kaepernick, we're gonna cancel Netflix, we're gonna boycott Netflix, let me tell you something, Netflix has some balls of steel, they do, Netflix has some fucking grapefruits, they got the testicular fortitude of a goddamn dragon from Game of Thrones, okay, versus Dave Chappelle shit pissing off the fucking... The transgender community. Now you're gonna piss off the right and all, all these Trump supporters and 
You know, you're going to get a lot of... Netflix is going to get a lot of flack for this show. I can guarantee that now. I, I got to watch some reviews on this, but I know Netflix is going to get a lot of shit for this. But personally, me speaking, I was entertained by it. And uh, if, if I can put on my critic hat, yeah, some of the acting here is a little, a little suspect, you know. And some of it's like too in your face. Like, hey, we're white and we don't like you just because you're black. You know, it's it's just too transparent. It's just too clean. You know what I'm saying? It's not realistic. Like, okay, I've encountered racism in my life. All right, I have. But it wasn't like directly in my face like, hey, I don't like you because you're black. It was always on some some shady subliminal shit. But if you read between the lines, you'd be like, wait a minute. That was some racist shit there. And I can kind of relate to what the brother went through because in elementary school, the elementary school that I went to, it was probably like maybe like four or 5% black, all right? There, there's been times where I was the only black kid in my class. So uh, if not for my parents and my family, I would not know about the black experience. But going to school, it's like I had to be a certain way because, you know, being around my family and seeing how we are, you know, it's how we interact with each other. And then when I go to school, I can't be the way with my family as I am at school because it's just culturally it doesn't fit, you know what I'm saying? And I've been criticized... Growing up, some out of, you know, especially down here in Bowl, butt scratching Orlando, Florida, when I would come down to visit, they'd be like, Rashad, why you talk like them crackers? Well, why you talk like a white person? You know, because I used to pronounce my words. And now I'm kind of a mix between New York and Florida. <laughs> I think I still have my New York accent. But um, yeah, so I, I, can, I can relate to some of that. And I can relate to how certain white people treat you a certain way or look at you a certain way because of, you know, but in here it's just, it's a little bit too much like in your face with it. You know, that, that's just me me nitpicking criticism. Uh, the actor that plays young Colin Kaepernick, I, I think he's fine in the role. You know, sometimes I think he overdoes it a little bit, especially there's a scene where he gets his hair braided for the first time. He tries to get cornrows like Allen Iverson, and um, he's in bed tossing and turning like it has hurt so much. And I've had my hair braided before. Yeah, it, it's tight, but, you know, it's it's not that fucking bad. You know what I'm saying? Plus, on top of that, you're supposed to sleep with a do-rag on to, to preserve your braids. I know you're like... But you bald, motherfucker. I wasn't always bald, okay? I used to have hair one time, right? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think the scene that made me laugh the most was when uh, he had to get his hair rebraided again. I'm talking about Colin. And he went to uh, the, the sister's house that braided his hair. And he brought his mom with him, right? And the mom was just like, she was bugging out the whole time. She was like uncomfortable. Like, oh my God, like, what is this? Like, she saw just a whole bunch of uh, African stuff all around the house. Pictures and just... You know, and even with the food, because when when his mom cooks for him, he has to put salt and pepper on his food because you know, on the food because you know the stereotype is white people don't season their food. But when he ate the sister's food, she was like, "Oh, he he put salt and pepper on everything." He's like, "No, no, 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 this doesn't mean anything. This is good." <laughs> and listen, when I guess when they was casting, they made the mom so white where they didn't even give her a butt. There was a part where she when she walked away right because she couldn't sit in the house anymore. She had to get out. And then she's walking out, they show, I'm like, where's her butt? Like, her pants are tight, but they're baggy at the same time. <laughs> Anyways, this is a good watch, man. I recommend watching it. Have you seen it already, man? Comment freely below. Let me know what you thought about it. Uh, that's all I got for right now. I'm going to come back and review the next three episodes, probably tomorrow. I'm going to try to post this tonight before y'all motherfuckers go to bed. If you like and dig this content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.